Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is June 11th. 12th. 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 Oh, that was, okay, June 11th was yesterday. Yes. But tomorrow, today will be yesterday. Right, and it'll be the 13th. That? Yeah. And yesterday, today was tomorrow. That's correct. But anyway, so I'm, I'm sort of, is, is that sort of like that first on? Who's on first? Yeah. Evan Costello whatever. can be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know who's on third. So I always try to say some things at the beginning as these notifications go out, and I'm here with the famous, <laughs> the famous astronomer of all time here at Answers in Genesis, because you're our only one. Did you know you are the most famous astronomer here at Answers in Genesis? I am, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> Dr. Danny Faulkner, and he looks after our astronomy programs here, and also the planetarium, the observatory, our telescopes, and also um, likes to stir things up in regard to the flat Earth. He, does, <laughs> he doesn't believe in a flat Earth. He, he, he believes in a round Earth, right? Yeah, spherical Earth. Spherical Earth. All right, so you got a book coming out on that too, soon, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, it's going to come out uh, late summer, I believe. Late summer. Right. And that'll be really good. I think people are really interested in mm -hmm. that. It goes through the biblical and scientific reasons why you believe in a spherical Earth. That's right. Uh, exactly. So I'm just going to get on our line here. Here we are. And uh, look, you can see ourselves. Can you oh, see it? That's oh, good. Yeah. All right. So one of the things we wanted to do was <coughs> to talk about what's going to happen next year with the planetarium because we have an exciting upgrade that we're actually raising funds for right now. Because, you know, when people pay to come to the Creation Museum or the Ark, we try to keep the ticket prices um, down as much as we can. We've got to be realistic to pay for staff and maintenance, you know, day-to-day -day running costs, which are enormous. But for anything extra, new exhibits or any major upgrades, we have to raise funds uh, from our supporters. And we're here in the planetarium right now, and actually, I, I remember when we first built the planetarium, somebody donated us a planetarium projector mm -hmm. that was actually used for some of the astronauts. Right. But it was one of those ones that I now remember as a kid going to a planetarium in Australia and thinking it was fantastic. They had this projector in the middle of the room and shone lights up on the dome. Yeah, I went to one of those when I was a kid. It was back in 1966, and they had a Spitz A3P which is what was given to us. Is what we would call that now an analog device rather than mm -hmm. digital one for doing mm -hmm. this. And they work fine. Some of them still being used, but uh, we can do so much more with these digital ones. And by the way, Ken, early on, I uh, back when I was in grad school, I used to give uh, planetarium shows with the Spitz A3B. Is that right? And yet we have you one. You must be <laughs> <laughs> so We have one on, on display as a museum piece now. It's a great instrument, but it is kind of outdated. And the ones that um, are still in use, they're really running on their last legs because they need frequent maintenance. Um, they, mechanical things wear out. Imagine yep, that. I'm sure so. Now, uh, of course, we didn't use that one. That's a museum piece mm -hmm. outside, actually, as a real museum piece. But here at the Creation Museum, this is a very, very popular yep. uh, program in here. We, have, we actually have a number of different shows. Right. We have two and, primarily with uh, the show. And, and two, and then another one at Christmas, mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, the Creative Cosmos is the most popular. Right. We have one on aliens that you wrote, too, mm -hmm. right? And when you look now at the system... Oh, and uh, don't forget, we also give live shows, particularly oh, during yeah. the summer. Uh, those are the sort of shows I used to give a long time ago, and they're a lot of fun. I like giving those today here. Planetary. We give them like, um, during the summer, primarily, right. when the numbers are up. And you, the live shows in here also connect with using the telescopes outside. When we do... If, uh, if you can actually see through right, the clouds. When we ever see the clouds. Yeah. We have stargazer nights, uh, uh, usually a monthly through the busy parts of the year, April to October. And we start off in the planetarium, and if it's cloudy... Uh, then we stay in the planetarium and do a, a very involved sort of program inside. But we much prefer to go outside with the telescopes. Well, people can see uh, that on the Creation Museum website, mm -hmm. all about the astronomy programs. Now, of course, when we went to our system in here, we have the dome, as you can see, and have the projection system. In fact, there's projectors on both sides that sort of connect in the middle. I don't know how they do all that. Mm -hmm. And we have a computer system in there. Uh, but at the end of this year, during the winter months of January and February, uh, and before that, we've got to raise the funds for this, but we, what uh, we are stepping out in faith to do is to raise the funds so that we can actually take this dome down, take the seats out, take all the computer systems out, redo this, put in a tilted dome, and a tilted dome actually means everyone gets the same experience, basically. It will be able to add more seats, 
because it's going to have a laser projection system over 800 uh, percent brighter. Brighter. Yeah. Can you imagine that with this laser system and all new software? Yeah, our, and, our system now is and is all brand new seats. Much of our system now is a dozen years old. And uh, the projectors, I think, are that old. We've gone uh, through upgrades before we started with the Digistar 3 system. We went to 4, now 5. The next system, I believe, will be a Digistar 6, which is going to be uh, far beyond what we have here. You can only upgrade so so far. Already, I can tell, just the other night we were doing our program inside. It was cloudy. And I could see one part of the sky was a little blurry, a little faint. I don't know. If, I hope the visitors didn't notice or guests didn't notice, but I could tell that it's it just got little problems, and it's only going to get worse. So it's about time we we upgrade. So we need to upgrade. Um, people love this program. We just had a full group in here. Now we're in between shows actually, because mm -hmm. there's a couple of thousand people here today at the mm -hmm. Creation Museum. Hey, somebody here said uh, Randy Pills. Is it? A roommate of mine from the uh, mid-70s. Hi, Randy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Randy. Good to hear from you. So, Come see us up here, Randy. Well, he must be old, too. Is he like you? So. Yes, he is. He's a year younger than me, I think. <laughs> we got somebody here from um, Mexico uh, who's on here. Um, somebody said, black hole is reportedly 53 million light years away from Earth. Does this contradict the young Earth perspective? No, it doesn't. In fact, I did an article on that just a few weeks ago, or I think about a month ago, about this... Um, as you may have seen in the news, this uh, they said it was the first photograph or image of a, of a black hole. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't quite what they had, but it was a new thing that they had done. And it's, it is uh, in, in the, um, um, this large cluster of, of galaxies it's called the Virgo Cluster. So uh, I did an article on that answering that very question. Is this a problem? The answer is no. I love black holes. Yeah. I think they're great. Well, people can go to our uh, website for articles. You often put up articles in relation to some supposedly great astronomical phenomenon or something like that. But um, let's uh, just get back here and, and uh, tell people, hey, if you want to help us with this, with the upgrade of the planetarium, uh, do I dare tell you how much it's going to cost altogether? Go it's ahead. It's actually <laughs> going to cost like $2 million yeah. for the entire upgrade. But it's a lot of money, I it, know, but a it, it's, it's a lot of money to do it, these it, sorts of things. Uh, it costs a lot of money, and we need to be technologically on the cutting edge. Mm -hmm. And this is old technology, and what happens is then you can't get parts for the projectors and, and the computers and so on. So it's all going to be upgraded anyway. The seats, after 12 years of hundreds of thousands of people sitting yeah. in these, uh, you know, they're getting to the stage we, we need to replace I, them. I was at a planetarium uh, at a school a couple of years ago, and they had an 18-year-old system. They're still on Digistar uh, oh. 3, and the thing just wouldn't work well at all. And they had called uh, Evans and Settle and the company, wanted to get, you know, some repairs. And apparently they just laughed at them and told them what you need is a, <laughs> is a new system. A new system. Yeah, so it's coming so, for us, too, eventually. Well, and this, this is considered an advanced system, but we're going to go to now. In its day. Now, in in its its day. day yeah. <laughs> uh, so we need to go to the new system uh, now. And actually, we've already raised $200,000 towards that. 10%? Uh, uh, $2 million. And this is our big fundraising project for the whole year. And so as we get towards end of year as well, uh, for our end of year big fundraising project. So if anyone uh, wants to find out more about that, uh, we'll provide the link for you to go to and you could help us to be able to upgrade this um, so that Dr. Danny Fortner can keep on doing these programs here. And we're going to release a new planetarium program next year yep. when we uh, reopen this. So right. January, February, the two winter months, they're the slowest months uh, of the year. And so that's when we will, like last time, you know, we'd close down the the special effects theater, and we totally renovated it, brand new now with a 3D program and 3D uh, system and all the rest of it. They wear interactive infrared glasses, and it is just uh, absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've been upgrading things all, all along the way. Uh, we've got new, we actually got new exhibits that will be opening uh, at the Creation Museum in November. Right. And then down at the Ark, we're um, opening a big new zoo expansion in the next few weeks. And then as well down there, we just opened our 2,500-seat new auditorium. Just opened the big playground for families. I saw that. And we have one here at the museum opened even a bigger one down there at the Ark. So, uh, oh, somebody said, how is the carpet doing? This is Martin from Northern Ireland because uh, <laughs> it was donated to us uh, from our supporter there in Northern Ireland. The we carpet, have a beautiful carpet in the, here. The really carpet is. is, yeah, but it is wearing out it too. Is. It's, I mean, it's perfect it's for a planetarium. It's 12 though. years old. It's perfect for a planetarium. And so if somebody wants to do this again for us and produce the carpet 
this was uniquely produced, I believe. I think for, the first time I came into this place, I, I was impressed with the carpet. I thought, that's really cool. Where did they get a it, pattern like that? So this I is know. just for us, huh? Yeah, I believe so. And uh, But, you know, like everything, it starts to wear out. And with thousands, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of it, there's millions of people who come to the Creation right. Museum. I'm not sure what the total number is that have been in the planetarium here. But you imagine that sort of wear and tear on the carpet, on the seats, uh, and so on. So we, we're going to upgrade the entire thing. So who knows? Maybe we'll get new carpet from Northern Ireland again. Uh, but anyway, uh, so would love to see a debate between a flat earther and Dr. Fortner. Yeah, I, I would love to see that too. <laughs> would you enjoy that? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. Well, we can't uh, actually stay in here too long because we've got to let people in, because we've got a program uh, that starts here very soon. Uh, so, Dr. Fortner, um, hey, thanks for taking the time today. Thanks for having me. And you. we look forward to the upgrade of the planetarium, and we look forward to people coming and hearing your planetarium programs. You're doing some programs, astronomy programs this year, so people can look on the website. Depends on the day, depends on what's going, what's on. going on. We have a transit of uh, Mercury, I think, in November we're planning to do. That's where Mercury passes in front of the sun. Doesn't happen very often. Oh, so. Ever since a little boy, I wanted to see that. I've seen a couple of those, yeah. but they don't happen very often, as I said. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, we do keep up to date some things astronomically. We have a wonderful observatory, don't we? A wonderful oh, yeah. uh, line of telescopes that we use. Wonderful here. telescopes. So uh, make sure you check out the Creation Museum uh, website and look at when Dr. Ford will be doing those programs. Also, when you come to... Uh, visit the Creation Museum, make sure you come to the planetarium. I mean, this will be totally operational right through the end of the year. And then January, February is when we're going to have to shut this temporarily as we renovate it, ready then for 2020. So there we go. Uh, so if you're interested in helping us with the upgrade, and we would appreciate your help because, uh, as I said, we've raised 200000 of the $2 million that are necessary, and we've just started our fundraising campaign uh, for that. So with that, we're going to... Say good afternoon here from inside the planetarium at the Creation Museum, where there are tons of, you see all these people outside? Oh yeah, it's, the parking lot's packed. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. People pouring in, it is down the Ark too, people pouring in down there as well. Thousands of people every day coming to the Ark and the Creation Museum. Okay, with that, we'll sign off here from the planetarium.